So in the last video of our knife fighting program, I talked about the Hollywood angles. Whenever I say Hollywood, what that means is the choreographed type of attacks that never really happen in the street. But we do practice them in class to get muscle memory of the arms and just to develop skill and speed more than, more than anything. But we advance this into realistic type of training. Now, in the last week we've seen a lot of videos from Asa and everybody talking about realistic attacking natures, which is what we're going to be showing of what we do here. Now, when it comes to any type of fighting, you should have your three ranges. In our core combatives program, we talk about the kicking range, the punching range, and then the grappling range. We always want to keep our situational awareness to the point where we don't let anybody within kicking range. Um, if he comes up and I'm saying I'm a police officer or a security guard or something, I want to be out of his kicking range and I'm going to use my big boy words. I'm going to tell him, you just stay there, I'll stay here, we'll talk this out, I'll take your statement, whatever, so on and so forth. But I'm explaining to him that at this distance you are not a threat. If you move forward towards me, I will consider you a threat. In today's MMA style uh, mentality, a lot of people, when he takes a step forward, I naturally want to take a step back. Um, depending on what job I'm on, if I'm doing a security guard uh, gig or something, I may give them one step. And I will use my big boy words, and I'll say, you don't need to come any closer. Now, if he keeps coming closer, I am taking that as a threat. So now, when he takes that step closer, instead of retreating back, I'm closing the gap. I'm kicking his knee, which usually brings the head forward, which will lead to that punch, which will lead to the grappling close range. So I take that into the street as well. And then if, if you're up close, you can use the same thing to retreat. So if he's close, I'd elbow, I'd punch, and then I'd kick him back so I can deploy my weapon. Um, let's say today, though, I don't have my weapon. I woke up late and I was stupid and I left my weapon, my knife, my handgun, everything at home, and now I am unarmed. Situational awareness number one should be always know where everybody is around you. So if I'm sitting here and this guy's looking pretty crazy and he starts walking up, I just wave at him and I move out of you know that, that range. If he's obviously going to be aggressive and I feel that threat level uh, rising, I'm going to assess that situation. Now if he has a blade, um, the most common thing that people will do, they want to get in close. Once they get in close, and I'm often never land or something, and then he hooks me and then starts you know, jabbing me or something, this is a bad day for me and I set myself up. I wasn't paying attention, I didn't have situational awareness. So that's step one, is to know your surroundings. If he's coming up and he's holding something behind his leg, or if he has his hand in his pocket, that should A, be a first sign that something is wrong, that I need to assess the situation and put my focus upon him and do my 360. So now, let's say I have that distance and I see that he does have a blade. Um, well, we'll switch so you can see this. Um, too many styles, when he comes in for that stab, they want to block. They'll catch it or they'll block it like this. In Croft Maga, you'll see they'll block it here, they'll punch up here. When you hit the head, his body goes back. So if he has this turned upside down with the blade up, and I do this and I punch him, he just sliced my wrist. That's going to be a bad evening for me. But we don't know this. I don't know how he's holding it. I just need to know that is a weapon and I need to stop it. For your pressure point enthusiast, what we like to do is we like to punch the arm and stop it physically. We don't believe in blocks in Okinawan Karate. Everything is a strike. So I'm blocking this, but I'm still striking. When he comes in, I'm just trying to hit large intestine 10, 11, uh, lung 5, any pressure point in the arm. If I hit it and he drops it, great. If not, I need to keep hitting. So he comes in, we'll do this real slow. He comes in, I go one. It keeps coming in, two, three, until I feel comfortable to take him out. Now, this, if he grabs the back of my head and he's slamming me here, I can still do the same thing here. All right, so I need to get out of that habit of trying to catch, trying to block and hit the body somehow, and just focus all my attention on stopping that arm. Am I going to get cut? More than likely, yes, but that's okay. I can get stitched up later. But for right now, we'll work the slow in the first steps as he comes in, he starts jamming me, 
we work on timing. He comes in, one, two, three, and I pass it. Whenever I pass this, it's still this hitting motion, but I'm just parrying it off to the side. I'm moving off the X and trapping his elbow. Now, for the people who follow core combatives, this is an alternative advanced point of reference. The top part of my arm is the positive and then the negative, okay? So I have control of the upper and bottom of his arm here. If he tries to pull back, I have control of him to a degree. But obviously, I'm not going to sit here and just wait for him to switch hands or do something else. I'm going to keep overlapping my attacks. So I'm going jam, jam, here, and trap him. The second I trap and pull him off, I'm throwing a knee to his groin. When this happens, I disconnect him a little bit more. So, once again, the mentality and the principles of core combatants. Victimize the attacker. Overlap my attacks until I reach an objective. I'm unarmed, so I am legally justifiable to end his life. And I'm not going to take that chance. So, I'm passing, throwing that knee, immediately reaching around in here. My objective is either to uh, end his life or create a choke position where I can say, drop the weapon. If he drops the weapon, I can kick his leg out, drop him down, and so, escape. This is a basic uh, practicing guide for the typical, I'm just going to gut you and ventilate you rather rapidly. So we go one, two, pass here, here. And then we can end it however which way we want. So once you start developing that, add in your footwork, we're not really working our footwork for the sake of the cameras. He comes in, one, he's running, two, and then I'm stepping in, and then ending his life here. So there's a better look at more realistic training and a more realistic approach to a certain technique that we use in our classes.